The saying goes, there's no such thing as bad weather, just inappropriate clothing. And for a sport like mountain biking, which is pretty much exclusively outdoors, that saying couldn't ring more true. But what is appropriate and inappropriate clothing for the conditions that you're going to be riding in? Well, don't worry, because today we are going to take a look. So sit back, relax, and let's dive on in. The summertime, let's kick things off there because it's normally the easiest knowing what to wear. You chuck on some shorts and a t-shirt and you just go cruise the trails, pump track, dirt jump session, skate park even, whatever you want. But is it that simple? On those longer, more technical rides, when that sun is blazing down on you all day, then a normal cotton t-shirt, well, you can still ride in it, it ain't a problem, but you're probably gonna get pretty hot and sweaty in it. In comes the technical t-shirt. Yes, these more sort of mountain bike orientated tops made from clever sweat wicking away materials. They're gonna help you sort of stay cool and dry at the same time. You don't wanna be riding around in a drenched t-shirt. It doesn't look good and it is not gonna do you any good either. On the bottom half end, what are you gonna wear? It's probably gonna be shorts because the temperature is gonna be hopefully scorchio. But your cut off denim jeans, they're not gonna cut it here. They're gonna be really hot, very restrictive. They're not gonna be very breathable, but you probably will look a bit badass. But a more mountain bike specific short is gonna be cut for moving and that cycling sort of motion in it. You're gonna have a good amount of pockets to keep all your gels and your keys and your phone in and stashed away also. And the materials themselves are gonna be a bit more sort of abrasive resistant. So if you do, dare I say, take a tumble, they're gonna handle that a bit better, but they're gonna be breathable. Also, they're gonna let the air flow through them and keep you nice and cool, especially whilst you've got your chamois, your bib shorts on underneath as well. Lastly then, it's down to footwear. Yes, you can wear your old trainers, they're gonna work perfectly fine. But if you're gonna wanna get the upper hand on your mates, then some mountain bike specific shoes are the way to go. I'm gonna shred some pump track and I'll be in my flat pedaled shoes. If obviously you ride clips, then a clip specific shoe is the way to go for that as well. A nice lightweight sort of summer shoe is gonna really work wonders and zip you around the trails in no time. Spring and autumn can be the milder months. They can have relatively similar temperatures, but they can still be a little bit tricky, mine, because one day you could have beautiful blue skies, the next day, a freaking hailstorm. Where the heck did that come from? That's autumn and spring for you. You never know what you're gonna get. So layering up correctly here and having the correct layers is really important. There's a real good chance you're gonna get caught in a shower during either of these seasons, especially if you're here in the UK. You know what I'm talking about, UK people. So a really good waterproof coat is key. Now, a mountain bike specific coat is gonna be best. There are slightly different cuts. They'll be longer at the back, maybe slightly longer in the arms as well for when you're in that riding position, but also with a hood that's gonna go over your helmet. Breathability is definitely something worth taking into consideration as well. There's no point being protected on the outside if you are absolutely sweating buckets on the inside. Don't fret though if you can't afford an all singing, all dancing mountain bike specific coat. There are plenty of great cheap alternatives out there as well. Things like walking and hiking type coats, they're really good for the job too. And let's just face it, if you're out in the weather and you don't have a coat, well, it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. What about if it's one of those drier days? You look out and you think, oh, actually, it ain't gonna rain today, but it is a bit nippy. The wind is in the air. It's cutting through you. But you don't want the bulkiness of a waterproof coat. Well, maybe just a lightweight, sort of packable, windproof shell could be a good way to go. Or something like a gilet, like this one here, it's just gonna keep your core nice and toasty, but that wind chill off of you. If you haven't got a coat or a gilet, fear not, you can still go out for a spin. You could chuck a nice uh, GMBN hoodie on, shall we say. You've still got the, the hood you can pop up and that's gonna keep you nice and warm. But we gotta move down. So, lower part of the body. What are you gonna wear, shorts or trousers? Well, that's gonna depend upon the conditions out there. If it is a pretty miserable day, well, then you're probably gonna wanna go down the trouser route. If it's particularly cold, a long bib may be necessary, but if you warm up pretty quick on the legs, then just some normal bib shorts with a good chamois, that'll do the job. With a pair of shorts, maybe, like I said, peer out the window, see what the weather forecast is, and decide from there. Finally then, when you are about to start your ride, just think about how much clothes you are gonna wear. There's no point putting tons and tons of layers on if it's pretty chilly out. Uh, to be like the Michelin man, you can barely move, but then when you soon warm up, which you inevitably will, you've got nowhere to put all of these layers. Personally, I like to start a little bit cold, which sounds crazy, but you'll soon warm up into the base layers and the race tops and gilets or something that you're wearing. Uh, and then once you're going, maybe just make sure you got a coat back at the car when you're done. 
pop it on, stay warm, jobs are good. Em. Winter then, this can be the most daunting of all the seasons because, well, you open up your curtains, you have a little gander outside and you think, crikey, it is horrible. I do not fancy going out there, but don't worry, don't be put off because with the right jacket and waterproof clothing, it can still be fun to ride in. And actually that leads me on nicely. Best thing to start with is a really good warm and waterproof coat. Layering up in winter is just as important as any other seasons, but the layers do slightly change. It's not a case of you just put 30 more layers on and end up sort of waddling around like the Michelin man like this, unable to move because that's not gonna do you any good. So it's getting the correct layers. Starting with the first layer, a good base layer is gonna keep you really warm. Something nice and snug and close fitting, maybe like some kind of merino wool base layer will help keep you sort of wicking that sweat away but also keep you toasty warm. Then on top of that base layer, you're gonna want some kind of technical riding top. Again, something that's gonna help wick the sweat away. A cotton t-shirt or hoodie, you know, you can ride them, of course, like I said, you can still wear these things, but technical layers, they do work really well. Then once you've got that technical top on, maybe think of putting a gilet over that. That's gonna keep everything nice and snug. You really wanna try and keep that core nice and warm. Finally then, the coat, the first line of defense against the elements in the winter. Like I said, something waterproof is gonna be a really good start here. Breathable as well, because you don't wanna be dripping from the inside, probably from the outside. But if it's really, really cold where you ride, if you're in Norway maybe, that's a pretty chilly place, then something more insulated like this one here uh, is really gonna help keep that heat in as well as the water out. Oh, actually, bonus, gloves. No one's cold digits, so a good pair of gloves is also really helpful. Finally then, there's no point having all the gear on the top half if the bottom half you're still just wearing your boardies or whatever, because you're gonna be really cold in them, even if they are good when it gets wet. If you've got a really good coat on, but just a standard set of shorts, all the water's gonna run down through and just give you really cold, wet legs. Trousers are making a big old comeback now, and waterproof trousers, mountain bike specific, are readily available these days. They can be a bit pricey though, so the hiking alternatives, if you're not fussed, can actually still work really well as well. Underneath that, to stop cold legs, a good pair of bib tights, preferably insulated ones, are also gonna work wonders for keeping you warm and toasty. Lastly, but not leastly then, is your feet. There's nothing worse than having really cold toes and feet the entire length of the ride. Those little piggies, they're gonna be squealing all the way home. A great thing to do here then is a nice warm pair of socks to start with, something merino wool maybe. Warm and insulated, but also a little bit breathable. If you wanna go up a notch, a waterproof style sock is gonna keep the elements at bay and ksh, puddle splashes out no thank you if you want to go the whole hog well then a waterproof shoe or a winter specific mountain bike shoe is amazing they are again worth their weight in gold i've said it before and i'm going to say it again but they'll often be made of clever materials like gore-tex and things like that to help keep the elements at bay insulated and they'll just make the ride especially if you're on for an all day at much more pleasurable. There you have it then, some helpful hints and poignant pointers on what to wear when mountain biking throughout the seasons of the year. Hopefully you guys and girls out there have been able to take some really good tips away from this. Let me know down in the comments what you guys wear when the weather does change, because I always like to hear from you guys. But that's it, I'm off for a spin. Happy riding everyone, and I'll catch you later.